Hi friends, welcome to this small session on arithmetic. The agenda today is to discuss a few good questions of arithmetic from past papers, memory based past papers. Now these questions were supposedly on the higher side of difficulty. Nothing is tough as such in prelims, but yes, students believe that they would have taken some time and many students tend to leave such questions, but they were all quite doable. I will take a few such questions and show that to you. The idea is to make you grow confident in arithmetic. It is not important only for mains, you know, arithmetic and data integration, but it comes in handy in prelims as well if you want to score higher. So let us have a look at these questions. So here is the first question on screen now. Please pause the video, read this question carefully and get to the answer. Restart the video only after you have got the answer. Let us look at this. What does it say? It is partnership. A and B invest rupees this much and this much in a business respectively. The moment you look at this in a partnership question, what should come to mind immediately? The ratio. So this is 24, 28, nothing but 6 is to 7. You cannot help not thinking about it, right? A withdraws his investment after 6 months. After 4 more months, C invests a sum in the business which is 20% more than the sum invested by A initially. Let me just quickly write the ratio of their investments. A is to B is to C. We already know this. 6 is to 7. And so this is 6 is to 7. And it says this is 20% more than the sum invested by A initially. So 20% more than 6. 20% of 6 is 1.2. So this is 7.2. Now we don't like dealing with decimals. We will just multiply this whole thing by 5. So what does it become? This is 30, this is 35 and this is 36. So this is the ratio of their investments. A is to B is to C. Now let's come to the time period that would give us the effective investments. It says A withdraws his investment after 6 months and the whole story is for this one year only. And when does C come in? C invests after 4 more months. So that's 10 months. So what would we consider here? two months as one unit of time right two months as one unit of time so it means that a remained invested for six months means three units of time so this is three units of time b remained invested for nothing is mentioned so we'll assume that for the complete year that would be six units of time and c invested after six plus four that is ten months it means that C remained invested just for one unit of time. It is like that. We will multiply this 30 into 3, 35 into 6, 36 into 1. In fact, I think we can cancel directly as well by 6. So this would go, this would just become 6 and this would be 5. So how much is this? This is now effective investments. This is 15 is 2. This becomes 35 and this becomes 6. So this is the ratio of their effective investments A is to B is to C. Time period multiplied by the money invested. We used two months as one unit of time to make our job easier. What is given to here? If the share of A and C together in the profit at the end of the year is rupees 4200, what is the total profit generated by the business? Where are A and C now? Look at this. This is A, 15 units of profit. And C should be given 6 units of profit. If the total profit is 15 plus 35 plus 6. So out of 15 plus 35 plus 6, which is 56, out of a total of 56 units of profit, A and C together should be given 15 plus 6, that is 21. Now these 21 units are given to you as this 4200. So what is the total profit? I'd say it's like this. Rupees 4200 into, it would be more. 56 by 21. Now, this is a simple calculation. This is 200. 56 into 2, 112. So, this becomes rupees 11, 200, which is our answer to the question. It is a fairly simple question. You just had to make sure that you optimize it here. Now, in place of writing this 361, we could have written, I mean, if I don't take it like this, two months as one unit of time and all. We could have written this as 6 months, this is 12 months, this is 2 months. Here in this question, it's fine because these are small numbers, but it's always a good practice to minimize these numbers. Fine, So it could have been bigger numbers, 5 months, 8 months as one unit of time. So by 
प्रैक्टिस ओनली यू शुड डू इट लाइक दिस सो द मोमेंट यू लुक एट दिस सिक्स मंथ्स टेन मंथ्स ट्वेल्व मंथ्स शुड थिंक ऑफ सिक्स मंथ्स एज थ्री यूनिट्स ट्वेल्व मंथ्स एज सिक्स यूनिट्स एंड टू मंथ्स एज वन यूनिट दैट्स द बेस्ट वे ऑफ डूइंग आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड दिस इज अ वेरी सिंपल क्वेश्चन बट यस इट केम द एग्जाम लेट मी शो यू द नेक्स्ट वन दिस इज द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन फॉर यू पॉज द वीडियो गिव मी द आंसर What does this one say? A and B invest rupees eight thousand and rupees ten thousand in the business respectively. Again, you directly think of the ratio. This is nothing but four is to five, right? It is agreed that A would keep twenty percent of the total profit for managing the business, and the rest would be shared according to their investments. So it's that working partner, sleeping partner concept. What does it say? Whatever profit is generated by the business. whoever is working for that business would keep some percentage which in this case is given as 20% for himself first and then the rest would be shared among the investors in the ratio of their effective investments so here what would happen is that if 100 units the profit 20 units would go to a first and then the distribution would happen it is very simple just treat it like that right a withdraws his investment after 5 months so a would earn because of two reasons one because he is working so that would be 20% up front and then because of his investment so this four units of investment or this 8000 rupees of investment is valid for 5 months if a receives a total of rupees 2500 at the end of the year what is the total profit generated by the business right simple so a remained invested only for 5 months it means nothing is mentioned about b b remained invested we can assume safely for the full 12 months So what is it like? A, I'll not write A and B now. A, we talk about this four units investment, and for five months. So what would we write for A? Four into five. Four units for investment, eight thousand rupees, and five units for five months. What is B? B, five units. That's ten thousand rupees. Is this five into B remained invested for full twelve months? Like that. Cancel this five. This becomes four to twelve. This is three. this becomes 1 is to 3 so 1 is to 3 should be the ratio in which the profit should be distributed because of their effective investments but is that all this is a is to b no 20% of it should go to a up front 20% here this 20% is 1 upon 5 it means that if the business generates a profit of 5 units one unit should be given to a first and then the distribution can happen now we can see directly from this That five minus one would be four units. Now this four units should be left for distribution, and these four units should be distributed like this. One goes to A here. Look at this, and the rest three go to B. So can I say that the effective distribution, if we consider the salary of A as well, would be two is to three, isn't it? Why is it two is to three? Because just look at it in the reverse manner. If it's five units of profit, A gets one unit, this twenty percent, because he is working for the business. Four are left. Four would be distributed like that. So if I have to calculate the total salary of A because of his investment and because he is working, it would be two units out of five. Can we think like that? Yes, we can. Now what is it? It says A receives a total of rupees twenty five hundred at the end of the year. Now this twenty five hundred is not because of investment, not because he is working, but because of both the factors. Because he has invested something and because he is working as well. Right. This is twenty five hundred. What is the total profit generated? So this twenty five hundred is what? It is this two units. So what is the total profit? I would say like this: rupees twenty five hundred into five by two. This is twelve fifty into five, which is sixty two fifty. So the answer would be rupees six thousand two hundred and fifty. Okay. You can do it in multiple ways, but what I would advise is that look at this directly. So the moment you get this one is to three, this one is to three is the easy part. You should arrive at this two is to three directly like that because these are simple numbers. Especially in this case, twenty percent. You know, it's one of five. So four units are left. One plus three is four. It's also apparent in front of you. So just do it directly. Let me show you the next question. This is the next one. A very simple question. Do not get into any ugly calculation. Give me the answer quickly. What's given to you here? A vessel contains milk and water in the ratio six to one. If twenty-one liters of the mixture is drawn out, 
and replaced with 77 liters of milk the quantity of the final mixture becomes twice the quantity of the initial mixture what is the quantity of water in the vessel initially the easiest of the law what is happening this is the initial ratio milk to water 21 liters is drawn out and replaced with 77 liters of milk can i say 77 minus 21 which is 56 56 liters is the net addition to this initial liquid 21 liters is taken out 77 liters is added 77 minus 21 56 so 56 liters is the net addition because of this 56 liters addition what has happened quantity of the final mixture becomes twice the quantity of the initial mixture twice so by adding 56 it becomes twice what is the meaning that the initial quantity also needs to be 56 the only way it's possible is that the initial quantity is also 56 it was 56 you take out 21 you add 77 so you are in effect adding 56 so initially 56 added 56 it becomes double isn't it question asked us what is the quantity of water in the vessel initially so 56 liters which is the initial quantity the initial total quantity and water is milk is to water is 6 is to 1 so 1 upon 6 plus 1 1 upon 7 how much is this this is 8 liters had they asked the initial quantity of milk you would have said 6 upon 7 into 50 whatever i mean it's an easy one but the crux was that do not get into those formulas and all just look at the question carefully at times they ask you very simple things right let me move to the next one this is the last question for you just read this carefully give me the answer quickly let's read this what does it say the quantity of milk in a mixture is six liters more than the quantity of water simple data this is six liters more after adding 40 liters of another mixture a second mixture the ratio of milk to water becomes 13 is to 9 in the final mixture simple again if the ratio of milk to water in the second mixture is 5 is to 3 what is the second mixture this one that's 40 liters what is the quantity of water in the final mixture let us just work on the difference first if you talk about this first one this first liquid the quantity of milk in this mixture is six liters more so this is six liters more so milk is six liters more i'm talking about the first one what is the position in the second one this is 40 liters now this 40 liters is made up of milk and water again and the ratio is 5 is to 3 so 5 plus 3 8 units just do it mentally 8 units is 40 liters 8 units is 40 liters so what is 2 units I'm talking about 2 because 5 minus 3 is 2. Difference is 2 units. 8 units, 5 plus 3 is 40 liters. So what is 2 units? 8 is 40 liters. 2 is 10 liters. Or you can just think of 15 liters and 25 liters. 25 liters milk, 15 liters water. But do it directly. 2 units becomes 10 liters. So here, milk would be 10 liters more. In the second one, you add the 2. This would be 16 liters more. You will not write anything. I am just showing it to you for explanation, for the ease of understanding. So, this is the final one. What am I saying here? In the first one here, milk is 6 liters more than water. In the second one here, milk is 10 liters more than water. If you add the two, milk would be 16 liters more than water. Right? Now, in this final one, what is the ratio given to you? 13 is to 9. What does it mean? If it is 13 units of milk, it's 9 units of water and the difference is 4 units. Now, this difference of 4 units, 13 minus 9, is given to you as the 16 liters, isn't it? This is what? This is 4 units. Now, this is 4 units. What are they asking? What is the quantity of water in the final mixture? If 13 units is milk, 4 units is the difference, 9 units of water, can we say 4 units is 16 liters? This 4 units here is 16 liters. What is 9 units? This 9 units. Answer would be simple 9 upon 4 into 16 liters. How much is this? This is 36 liters, which becomes your answer to the question. So just calculate whatever is required to calculate. Do not do any useless work. For that, keep your mind open, think logically, read carefully, and then attack the question. This was a very simple one. They were all quite simple, weren't they? Arithmetic can be really rewarding, even in prelims. Learn it by heart and it's going to give you quick marks. All these questions can be done really quickly by anybody who's got good command over the subject. 
right so just keep working on it practice solving more questions the kind of questions that come in exam test series and all and you'll keep getting better at the subject we have launched the second batch of our preparatory program for SBIP and IBPS so if you're interested go through the details they are there in the comment section fine so that's just go through the page and everything before enrolling yourself and guys keep working really hard the exams we don't know they're going to happen PO exams but yes this is the time when you build a foundation for it and not have much time left when the notification arrives so just keep working very hard do not leave anything to chance and just give it your very very best Good luck.